Okay, hold on a second. Um, <laughs> so, are you guys Monty Python fans? So there's this really funny Monty Python skit. It was a parody of a talk show called How to Do It. Today on How to Do It, we're going to tell you how to play the flute, how to make all races and creeds get along perfectly well, and how to solve all known diseases. Let's start with Jackie, who'll tell us how to play the flute. Jackie, well, yes, what you do is you blow in one end and you move your fingers up and down the outside. Thank you, Jackie. Um, now we'll tell you how to solve all the world diseases. Bob, yes, well, what you do is you become a doctor, you find a cure for something, and make sure everybody knows about it so there won't be any diseases anymore. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> You're wondering where I'm going with this. Um, you are but children. You have no experience no, no, in the... Oh, you're grown... <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you probably have iPods and Facebook pages. <laughs> Um, how could, I mean, you know, obviously we're all blown away here, but isn't this just like a paper? This isn't a plant. This is, I mean, this, this could be a movie. You were going to face, like, people stealing your ideas and the industry fighting you and all the entrenched interests saying, no, 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 that will threaten us. And, I mean, could this ever be real? It absolutely can be real. The tricky thing actually will be to convince, the thing we're running up against is the regulatory structure in the United States, because it's really tricky to get new reactor designs licensed. And in a way, that's good, because you want the NRC to say, you know, wait a minute, make sure this is safe. But on the other end, we're like, oh, we have this, and it's good, and we know it's good. Just let us try it out. So that's kind of what we're up against, the sort of regulatory structure. But science-wise, it's sound. It's solid. Do you have somebody who can say that? Oh. <laughs> well, I guess, let me backpedal quickly here. Um, I guess what I'm driving at is, um, you're not unveiling this at TED New England, right? Doesn't this first have to be in a scientific journal and then peer reviewed and then have some government agency try to kill it? And I mean, there, there's a long, like, right? How imminent is this? It's honestly, the earliest that an actual physical plant could be built would be about 10 years from now. But we have proof of concept simulations right now, and those are the type of simulations that you'd go to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission with and say, well, we have these computer simulations, now can we start talking about building a prototype plant? Because you have to approach them with the computer simulations first. So, Professor, you've looked at this and you can think I, it could fly? Can I say something? <laughs> may, may I say? I'm not sure. Uh, Yes. No, I, the, the point that you make is a good one. I mean, this is, the, these ideas have to be tested in the, in the literature and in experiments and in prototype plants, pilot plants, and so on. You don't announce new systems at events like this. <laughs> but, but one of the things that I think uh, we have learned in this field and many other fields is that, you know, Research and development in the end in the United States is supported by the American public. And we need to learn how to talk about these things, not only to ourselves, but to people who may not be experts in the field, but who are interested in these things, and in the end will have an influence on whether the support will be forthcoming to do the prototypes and pilot plants and so on. So. It's important for us to, and particularly important for our students, to be able to talk about these things in this, in this kind of forum. We've developed a kind of a, uh, almost a slogan for the education that we try to give our students. And it said, it's science, systems, and society. And the third word, society, is really important. It, it, it means that our students need to understand how the systems and the science that they work on interact with society. And I think you know, what, what Mark and Leslie are doing is designed to address not just the issues that engineers worry about, but the issues that the American public are concerned about, safety and waste. 
So are, are, you, are you prepared to say then, uh, scientifically, this is a sound idea? This is a good idea. It needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of investment. It needs to be competing with a lot of other ideas that other people, including other students in our department, are working on. And that's how these ideas get really, um, uh, re that's how they get realized, through so that B kind plus, of process. Kind of like oh, <laughs> they get, I'm just, I'm just kidding, it's a joke. They, it's a joke. they get an A, they so, get an A. So, all right, and one last question. I, I actually meant to ask all of you this. So, uh, you, you touched on something that I, as a science reporter, am frequently up against. There's an anti-science wave in this country right now, right? Like, we think we're so smart on our white bread East Coast and the white bread West Coast, but in the middle of the country, in the South, you know, it's creationism and we don't like scientists and we're suspicious. It seems to me that much of the discussion about the future of energy is, is um, encapsulated in, in how much people can hold in their imaginations. Like, we like solar and we like wind because we can understand it and it's pretty. It's a big pinwheel, you know, like, I get that. But nuclear is like, a, like it's a black box, like it's too complicated, so I don't trust it. How much of an issue is that in, in planning the, the countries uh, moving forward in energy? How, how much do you have to run up against people's dim-witted conceptions of what's really going on? <laughs> well, it's, it's an issue. It's an issue. But look, we're going to need all of these things. We're going to need solar. We're going to need wind. We're going to need much greater efficiency of energy use. And we're going to need nuclear. And I think that, you know, our students sometimes get a little bit of a bad rap. Uh, you know, the presumption is that everybody wants to go into financial services and hedge funds and all the rest of it, and certainly there's a temptation to do that, and many people do. But we have, you know, at MIT alone, there are, what is it, a couple of thousand students who are members of the MIT Energy Club working on all of these kinds of things, not just nuclear, but solar, wind, and so on. And there's tremendous desire on the part of these students to really make a difference by doing good science and engineering. So I think when, you know, when we hear that the, that the world is heading you know, down the drain and down the financial drain, well, there's some of that. But there's also lots and lots of outstanding people who really want to make a difference through science and engineering. And you can't get any better examples than this. I agree. Richard, Mark, Leslie, thank you so much. Thank you. We all wish you good luck.